Happy Holidays everyone, Mike Clifford here, and today we're going to make a table using two techniques that are new for me. One, we're going to try to make concrete look like marble, and two, we're going to use an ancient technique from Japan called Shushugiban to burn the wood to finish it. For the table base, I used 4x4 lumber that is really inexpensive. The wood for this table only cost about 30 bucks. I used Douglas fir because that's what was available from my local Home Depot, but you can use any type of open grain wood like cedar, pine, or Douglas fir. While I planed this wood down to get nice even edges, that's really optional. You can just use the 4x4 lumber as is. And the four legs for the table base are all going to be angled out at 35 degrees, so just set my miter saw on 35 degrees and use that to cut all the legs. I left it there then to cut the four pieces that made up the lower part of the table base. You notice here that after I cut one piece, I then use that piece to mark the next piece that's identical. To me, I find this is better than trying to pre-measure so that you can get the exact cuts to measure if one of your earlier cuts isn't quite exact. Especially with the angles, this really helps. Then I went to glue up the legs on either side. So each side would have two legs and a center piece from the 4x4 that connects them. Since I knew I was going to burn this, I just used some Craig screws and drove those in to hold the glue in place rather than messing with a custom clamp for the angle. After the glue dried up, I wanted to add more lateral stability with 6 inch lag screws. So I pre-drilled a countersink hole with the Forstner bit, drilled a quarter inch pilot hole, and then finally drilled the six inch lag screws into the sides of each leg. I was also concerned that the Shushugibyong process of burning the wood might cause shrinkage that would reduce the hold of the glue. So on the underside of all four base pieces, I drilled pilot holes that would allow me to go back and secure the base pieces together uh, after the burning process. I used a three quarter inch fortune bit to drill holes where the screw marks were from the glue up and then used dowels to cover those up. And I cut those off with my Japanese handsaw. I also used the three quarter inch dowels to cover up the lag bolts and the sides of the legs. After the legs had thoroughly dried, uh, I went to glue up the entire base together. And here's a demonstration of my number one rule for glue ups, which is always have a wet rag handy because you will inevitably get some glue where you don't want it. Here, the exposed middle pieces, uh, I accidentally got some glue there, but was able to get rid of it quickly with the wet rag. After the glue dried, I used my belt sander to get everything level and then took it over to my friend's house in the suburbs to play around with some fire and burn the base. I was a little nervous because I'd never tried this before, but it was actually just really easy. Uh, it's really hard to overdo. I was going for what was referred to as an alligator skin look where the charred wood uh, remains and it's, it's basically just blackened. Uh, you could also get a lot of different looks uh, with combinations of browns where you see the rings by using a steel brush to brush it off afterwards. To get the alligator look, I used a uh, Danish oil finish to soak into the wood and really make sure that it hardened up inside of it. And I was really happy how this came out. Then it was time to make the form for the concrete top. And I've gone through this in a bunch of my videos, so for this video, I'm just going to sit back and I'll let the music play. You can go back and watch those other videos if you want to walk through.
Attack Life Tools sent me a couple new levels to use, which I really liked, and I used them to make sure everything was perfectly level. Then I cut half inch pieces of insulating foam to serve as inserts inside of the concrete to reduce weight. You just use a razor blade to score them and then they snap right in half. Then I went to mix the concrete. Again, I used Fishtone's GFRC premix, which I love, is way better than any of your normal store-bought mixes, and I'll have a link to that in the description. So I first mixed the face coat, and to get the marble look, what I'm doing is setting aside a couple small containers of the face coat mix, which are pure white, one which is really dark and almost black color, and then I'm going to put some Quickrete pigment into the mix and swirl it so that it is an uneven color in my main bucket. Then I'm going to drizzle around the white concrete mix, pour in the uh, uneven mix, and then add in some dark black mix. And then I just use my hand to swirl around and get a nice uh, swirled look, which I was hoping would resemble marble. After letting that face coat dry for 30 minutes or so, I made the back coat with glass fibers. Uh, it's identical other than those glass fibers. Uh, and I did repeated the process here of mixing in some white and then also having some swirls. I'm going to jump ahead a second and tell you that when I put the foam in uh, here, which I've normally done, I try to do three quarters inch of concrete, half inch foam, and a quarter inch concrete on top. It didn't work here. The foam started floating and I had a panic. I ended up having to put two by fours in, in, on the sides to hold the foam down. So I think I saved it, but as a result of me pushing the foam down, it actually mixed the colors of the concrete and it came out with more of a cloudy look uh, instead of the sort of striations and veins that I've been hoping for. But I still think it did a pretty good job of getting a sort of marbly look. I'd really love to see uh, someone else tries it or maybe I'll try it again to do this project uh, and not have the mishap with the floating foam inserts and see if you can really get that veiny look uh, and, and not have it over mixed to get the cloudy look like I ended up with. And now for the best part of any concrete project is flipping it over, revealing that top and sitting back and seeing what you've got. Now one thing I didn't show here is that I finished it by just quick wet sanding by hand with 400 grit sandpaper just a three or four minute sanding process then I applied sealer let that dry and was ready to put the top onto the base and despite the mishap with the uh, foam I think it came out really cool I think it does have a kind of marvelous appearance even though it's concrete I haven't quite seen anything like it so I was pretty happy if you like it please Click subscribe so you get notified about future videos. Click the like button. Leave a comment so YouTube knows you like it. And that would really help me out. That's it for now, and I'll see you next time.